we have a paper presenting the topic cardiology level arrhythmia detection and classification in ambulatory ecg using a deep neural network under the guidance of somnath raj chaudhary sir our uh, presenters include myself foriyachi bhattacharya uh, dipika chandra nisha kumari and uh, sohil rajan uh, so the so first slide describes the objectives uh, we have focused on and our approach to the project our approach could aid arrhythmia diagnosis in clinics and uh, be used for patient self monitoring to improve the early detection and effective treatment of arrhythmia this is used to design deep learning architecture to classify an ecg signal uh, by empirically uh, optimizing the uh, numbers of hidden layers so uh, in the next slide we have a little introduction on ecg and its utilities so uh, a computerized electrocardiogram that is an ecg interpretation plays a critical role in the clinical ecg workflow Uh, here, how we develop a deep neural network that is a DNN to classify 12 cases using 91,232 single lead ECGs from 53,500 coordinate patients who use a single lead ambulatory ECG monitoring device. Uh, the findings demonstrate that uh, an end-to-end -end deep learning approach can classify a broad range of distinct arrhythmia from single lead ECGs uh, with high diagnostic pro uh, performance, similar to that of cardiologists. If confirmed in clinical settings, this approach could reduce the rate of misdiagnosed uh, computerized ECG uh, interpretation and improve efficiency of expert human ECG interpretation by accurately triaging or prioritizing the most uh, the most urgent conditions. So, before going to the next slide, uh, I would like to give a little introduction uh, about ECG waves. So, as we already discussed, that ECG is the electrocardiogram. Uh, and it is a process of producing an electrocardiogram basically uh, it is an electrogram of heart which is a graph of voltage versus time of the electrical activity of the heart using electrodes placed on the skin these electrodes detect the small electrical changes that are a consequence of cardiac muscle depolarization followed by repolarization during each cardiac cycle that is a heartbeat uh, here first i would like to uh, explain the various waves of this graph So the P wave here represents the depolarization of left and right atrium and also corresponds to atrial connection. The QRS complex, which includes the QR and S waves, occur in rapid succession, representing the electrical impulses. It spreads through the ventricles and indicates ventricular uh, depolarization. Whereas the T wave, which is followed by the QRS complex, indicates ventricular uh, repolarization. Next slide, please. Uh, so, in this slide, we have a CIE that is computerized, uh, computer interpreted uh, ECG electrocardiogram. So, computerized interpretation of electrocardiogram uh, was introduced to improve the correct interpretation of ECGs. CIE over reading and confirmation by an experienced ECG reader are essential and are repeatedly recommended in public reports. Significant process was made in the development of the ECG algorithms for uh, use in the CIE. However, limitations are still present, requiring standardization with continuous improvement in applied uh, software and uniformization of ECG diagnostic criteria and statements. Okay, so uh, we are going to uh, we are going to detect uh, different uh, types of arrhythmia uh, using a deep neural network uh, that we have. And uh, the model, the deep learning model that we have used in our uh, project is uh, the uh, convolutional neural network. Uh, and my group members are Oriyanti Bhattacharya, Dipika Chandra, myself Nisha Kumari, and Sohail Raja. So uh, the objective of our uh, project is uh, our approach uh, could aid arrhythmia diagnosis in clinics and be used for patient self monitoring to improve the early detection and effective treatment of arrhythmia uh, this is used to design deep learning architecture to classify an electrocardiogram ecg signal by empirically uh, optimizing the numbers of hidden layers so a uh, computerized electrocardiogram uh, interpretation plays a critical role in the clinical ecg workflow widely available uh, digital ecg data and uh, the algorithmic paradigm of deep learning present an opportunity to substantially improve the accuracy and scalability of automated ecg analysis uh, here we 
we develop a deep neural network to classify 12 rhythm classes using 91,232 single lead ECGs from 53,549 patients who used a single lead uh, ambulatory ECG monitoring device. The findings uh, demonstrate that an end-to-end -end deep learning approach can classify a broad range of distinct arrhythmias from single lead ECGs with high diagnostic performance similar to that of cardiologists. If confirmed in clinical settings, this approach could reduce the rate of misdiagnosed computerized ECG interpretations and improve the efficiency of expert human ECG interpretation by accurately triaging or prioritizing the most urgent conditions. Computerized interpreted, uh, interpreted uh, electrocardiograms. So, computerized interpretation of the electrocardiogram was introduced to improve the correct interpretation of the electrocardiogram facilitating healthcare decision making and reducing costs. Consequently, CIE over reading uh, and confirmation by an experienced ECG leader are essential and are repeatedly recommended in published reports. Implementation of new ECG knowledge is also important. Significant process was made in the development of ECG algorithms for use in the CIE. However, limitations are still present, requiring standardization with continuous improvement in applied software and uniformization of ECG diagnostic criteria and statements. Systematic overreading of CIE is mandatory. Deepika, now the further slides will be continued by Deepika. Deepika, over to you. Yes. Yes. So, good evening, everyone. I am Deepika Chandra, and my role number is 8103. Uh, now I am going to present from here. So my topic is uh, so good. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Deepika Chandra. Now I am going to present from here. So my topic is arrhythmia. Arrhythmia means irregular heartbeat. Heart rhythm problems occur when the electrical signals that coordinate the heart speed don't work properly. There are two types of arrhythmia. That is tachycardia and bradycardia. Tachycardia is fast heartbeat. In this, heart rate is greater than 100 beats a minute and bradycardia is slow heartbeat. In this, heart rate is less than 60 beats a minute. Change this uh, Now, machine learning. First of all, what is machine learning? Machine learning is a technique of training machines to perform the activities a human brain can do a little bit faster and better than an average human being. Today we have seen that the machines can beat human champions in games such as chess, AlphaGo, which are considered very complex. There are three types of machine learning, supervised learning, unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning. If we have lesser amount of data and clearly leveled data for training, we have to opt for supervised learning. Its application is fraud detection, image classification, customer retention, diagnostic, forecasting, predict predictions process optimization new insights uh, if we have more amount of data and unlevel data for training we have to opt for unsupervised learning its application is feature elicitation structure discovery uh, meaningful compression big data visualization recommended systems and etc uh, and now reinforcement learning it is a type of machine learning method where an intelligent agent interacts with the environment and learns to act within that its application is real time decisions, game, AI, learning task, etc. Next slide. Now, deep learning. Uh, deep learning is a subset of machine learning which essentially a neural network with three or more layers. These methods have dramatically improved the state of the art in speech recognition, visual object recognition, object det uh, detection and many other domains such as drug discovery and genomi genomics. Deep learning discovers intricate structure in large data sets by using the back propagation algorithm to indicate how a machine should change its internal parameters that are used to compute the representation in each layer from the representation in the previous layer. Deep convolutional nets have brought about breakthroughs in processing images, video, speech and audio whereas recurrent nets have shown light on sequential data such as text and speech. Um, thank you. Now Suhail will present from here. Uh, uh, 
good evening everyone i am swadreja so in this study we construct a large novel ecg data set that underwent expert analysis for a broad range of ecg rhythm classes <clears throat> then we develop a dna to detect 12 rhythm classes from a raw single lead ecg inputs using a training data set consisting of 91232 ecg records from 53,500, 53,549 patients. The DNN was designed to classify 10 rhythm, 10 arrhythmias as well as sinus rhythm and noise for a total of 12 output rhythm classes. Then <coughs> the ECG data, ECG data were recorded by the geo monitor, which is a food and drug administration cleared single lead path-based ambulatory ECG monitor 27 that continuously record data from a single vector at 200 Hz. The mean and media where time of the geo monitor is our data set was 10.6 and 13 days. Main age was 69 <coughs> plus minus 16 years and 43 percent were women. Main age on the on the test data set was 70 plus minus 17 years and 38 percent were women. The main inter annotator agreement on the test data set was 72.8 percent. Next slide. <coughs> then here are the requirements. So uh, here are two types of requirements, one is software and hardware. In the software requirements, we uh, use our upper system, operating system as Windows and or Linux and the platform which we use are Kegel Notebook, Python 3, Anaconda, Python etc. And the hardware requirements are speed of <coughs> 20, uh, 233 MHz and above, hard disk of minimum uh, 10 GB and the RAM 256 MB. Next slide. Next is proposed method algorithm. Method or algorithm. <coughs> so we extract a median of on 30 second record per patient to construct the training data set. So uh, we randomly sampled patient exhibition each rhythm to further improve the balance of the classes in the training data sets, rare rhythms such as ABB were internationally over, uh, over sampled with a median of 2 30 seconds record per patient. For the data set 30 seconds record of each rhythm were sam sampled in similar manner to achieve a greater representation for rare, uh, for rare rhythms. However, the test data sets include only a single record per patient. Next is annotation procedures. All the ECG records in the training and test datasets underwent additional additional annotation procedures. We used separate procedures to annotate <coughs> the training and the test datasets. To annotate the training datasets, a group of senior certified ECG technicians reviewed all the records and noted the onset and the offset of the rhythms on the record. We held out records from a random 10% of training dataset patients for use as a development dataset to platform DNN hyper <coughs> parameter planning. Handing over to Nessa for the next part. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, so, uh, hello, everyone. I'm Nisha and I'm going to talk about the algorithm development and algorithm uh, evaluation. So we developed a convolutional DNN to detect arrhythmias which takes as input the raw ECG data which has been sampled at 100 hertz and outputs one prediction every 256 samples which we call the output interval. We found the residual connection, the connections useful once the depth of the model exceeded 8 layers. We also experimented with recurrent layers including long short term memory cells and bidirectional recurrents but found no improvement in accuracy and a substantial increase in runtime. Thus, uh, we abandoned uh, those models. Uh, 
so uh, algorithm evaluation since uh, the BNN outputs one class prediction every output interval it makes a series of 23 rhythm production predictions uh, for every 30 seconds record the cardiologist annotated the, the start and end point of each rhythm class in the record we use this to construct a cardiologist label at every uh, output interval by rounding the annotation to the nearest interval boundary so the model accuracy can be assessed at the level of every input interval which we call sequence level or at the record level which we call the set level uh, the sequence level evaluation is similar to clinical applications whereby it is critical to identify the onset and the opposite of rhythms and evaluation at the set level is a useful uh, abstraction approximating how the DNN algorithm might be applied to a single ECG record to identify which diagnoses are uh, present in a given record. Uh, so that's statistical analysis. So uh, to, in order to obtain estimates of how the DNN compares to an average or a cardiologist performances, we used confusion matrices to illustrate the specific uh, examples of rhythm classes where uh, the deep neural network prediction uh, were discordant with uh, the committee uh, consensus at the uh, sequence level. Uh, so here uh, on the left side you can see the average cardiologist la label uh, confusion matrix and the confusion matrix which uh, ha has been predicted uh, by uh, the, uh, the deep learning uh, network. Now we can see uh, the prototype of uh, our model. So uh, in our uh, DNN uh, it uh, the our deep neural network consists uh, of 33 convolutional layers followed by a linear output layer into a soft max. So the network uh, accepts raw ECG data as input, uh, sampled, which are, are sampled at 200 marks and outputs uh, a prediction of 1 out of 12 possible rhythm classes every 256 uh, samples. Now we'll take a look at this uh, diagram, uh, this flowchart basically. So uh, here, uh, what is happening? Uh, first, uh, let me uh, uh, tell you about. Okay, uh, the ReLU is uh, basically the rectilinear linear unit, and bash norm is the uh, bash normalization uh, uh, activation function. So the entire neural network is uh, an optimization of multiple models uh, to reduce the bias tra variance trade-off, right? So individual blocks should mean basically uh, training steps of an individual model. Uh, like uh, we can consider that as the steps for boosting. So we see we can see the convolutional layer. So the convolutional uh, layer uh, uh, filters uh, is where the filters are applied to the original image or to other feature maps in a deep uh, convolutional neural network. So this is where most of the user specified parameters are in the network. Then comes batch normalization activation function. Basically batch normalization, rectilinear unit, dense layer, etc. are the activation function. What is an activation function? Uh, an activation function is a function which defines the output of a neuron uh, slash node given an input or uh, a set of uh, given an input or from a set of inputs. It is uh, the mimic of the uh, stimulation of a biological neuron. Uh, so batch normalization or which uh, or which is being termed as batch norm in our flowchart uh, normalizes the inputs within a layer for each mini batch. Uh, the result is that it stabilizes learning process of new network model and reduces number of training epochs that are required. So it is basically a technique for training very uh, deep neural network that standardizes the inputs uh, to a layer for each mini batch. Uh, this stabilizes the learning process. Now we can see uh, uh, the other uh, activation function that is the rectilinear linear unit. So really or a rectilinear linear unit is uh, a piecewise linear function that will output the input directly if it is positive, otherwise it will output zero. 
So it has become the default activation function for many types of neural networks because a model uh, which uses this, uh, this activation function is easier to train and often achieves better performance. Uh, then comes, uh, we can also see uh, the other uh, convolutional layer and here we can see one more activation function, one more added layer which is the dropout layer or the dropout activation function. So dropout is basically a technique where the randomly selected neurons are ignored during training. That is, uh, that is done in order to reduce the noise uh, in our data set so that our uh, deep uh, learning model or our neural network could only focus on the uh, valid uh, part of the data or the data which is which actually uh, matters which is actually needed in order to uh, bring the valuable result uh, to our uh, neural network to our neural network model so here we can see that we are following a max group so the, the uh, we have also we are added uh, basically we have added a, a pooling layer. Uh, so the addition of a pooling layer after a convolutional layer is like a common pattern for ordering layers within a convolutional neural network. Uh, then may be repeated one or more times in a given model. So here we have used max pool, which calculates the max value for each batch of the feature map. And after that, we can see uh, we have, uh, uh, we have the, there is another uh, uh, convolutional layer, and uh, this time this will uh, run for 15 times. That is, uh, it will run for 15 epochs. Now comes the output layer or the final uh, layer of our neural network. Here we uh, we can see a new uh, activation function uh, called dense layer. So a dense layer is a simple layer of neurons in which each neuron receives input from all the neurons of previous layer uh, and therefore it is termed as dense layer. So this is used to classify image based on the outputs uh, for the convolutional layer. And uh, after the uh, dense layer, the neurons go to uh, the softmax layer. So softmax layer is uh, basically a mathematical function that converts a vector of numbers into a vector of probabilities where the probabilities of each value are proportional to the relative scale of each value in the vector. So uh, this was our prototype. Now we will see few screenshots from the uh, board. Uh, so here, uh, so should I directly show the board or should I show the screenshot? First, yeah, very good. You first show the screenshot, then you actually go to the code and we will uh, discuss the code. You get it, uh, this thing and okay. uh, please carry it. Thank you. Alright, so first uh, we have, uh, we can, uh, we have uh, tried to balance the classes. Okay, we have taken five classes. Uh, I will show it uh, while we will code it. So we tried to balance the classes. We can see that uh, the classes aren't balanced uh, equally. So we try to resample it and after resampling uh, the data set we see that our classes get uh, perfectly balanced. So now we can work on uh, our data set. So here arithmia on ECG classification so we can see uh, that uh, we have plotted uh, the uh, what is called uh, the heart uh, ECG uh, diagram for uh, our one of the classes. Now here is a representation for all the classes. We take all the signals and we map them like that. We have an estimation what the signal can look like. So uh, that was uh, the graph, and this is what the histogram will uh, look like for one class. And similarly, we have plotted for another class the classes as well, right? And uh, this is the main uh, body. It is the main function of uh, main coding. That is uh, our uh, uh, neural network. No, no, no. We treat, we, I will talk about this. Okay, then we pre treated our data. Uh, that's it. Uh, this is the main uh, thing. Uh, the, our uh, deep neural network, the convolutional neural network, we trained our model uh, here, our convolutional layer. And uh, then uh, we can see that uh, 
uh, we can see over here the accuracy versus epoch uh, uh, graph the graph was plotted and the accuracy versus model uh, loss graph has been uh, plotted as well so uh, yeah that's it and uh, in the, and uh, finally we could uh, uh, we tried to uh, plot uh, the confusion matrix after normalizing it uh, so uh, this is the final output we can see there are uh, all uh, five classes uh, depicted here and uh, here as we can see that uh, all the classes uh, where the uh, there are intersecting uh, like uh, uh, they are uh, relatively darker than uh, the other uh, squares as you can see so that just means that uh, our model is going in the right path that is it is predicting uh, correctly so this is the normalized uh, uh, confusion matrix so we underline that two class uh, uh, super ventricle that is s and uh, the uh, and fusion class is weaker than the other because maybe in our data set uh, uh, due to less examples uh, we uh, like we didn't uh, we couldn't uh, train uh, uh, it uh, train our model for the uh, s and b class uh, of uh, the rhythms so now i would like to take you all to the code so basically uh, so here we have two different uh, no, a database contains 48 half hour excerpts of two channel ambulatory ECG recordings obtained from 47 subjects studied by BIH Arrhythmia Laboratory between 1975 and 1979. So, uh, 23 recordings were chosen at random from a set of 4,024 hour ambulatory ECG recordings collected from a mixed population of inpatients and outpatients at Boston's Beth Israel Hospital. Uh, the remaining 25 recordings were selected from the same set to include less common but clinically uh, significant arrhythmias that would not be well represented in a small uh, random sample. Uh, here is the sources uh, if uh, you want to see uh, from where we got the data set. Uh, this is where we got our data set. So uh, the number of samples that uh, we are working on currently are uh, 1 lakh 9,000. 446 and we have taken into consideration uh, basically five categories and our sampling frequency is 125 hertz uh, so data set source uh, we already mentioned that it's physionets mit bh arrhythmia data set uh, so here uh, we have named our five classes as n s v f and q where n stands for non epochic beats s stands for supraventric Topic beat beats. B stands for ventricular ectopic beats. F stands for fusion beats, and Q stands for uh, unknown beats. And we have numbered it accordingly, uh, where N is zero, S is one, V is two, F is three, and Q is four. So, what is an ECG? And ECG is a simple test that can be used to check uh, uh, your heart rhythm and electrical activity. So, first, what is happening? is that we are loading our data so uh, we are loading our data we are uh, basically importing uh, all the uh, modules from the we are importing the os module which will help us uh, to work uh, with all the functions that are needed uh, uh, to work with uh, the operating system and uh, related uh, functionalities and we imported different uh, uh, libraries modules uh, in Python like NumPy, Pandas, Seaborn, Matplotlib and many others. So uh, here uh, we are reading a data set as I have already shown in the previous slide that I have tried to balance the data set. So uh, as uh, like I stated above that and uh, we have uh, we have named n as 0 uh, and uh, the n that is uh, uh, what non aquatic beats n is 0 and uh, one is supraventricular beats so that's what the, uh, it is showing that uh, there are 72,471 uh, non-ectopic beats and similarly for uh, it is showing the number of uh, uh, 
uh, data is present uh, for the other uh, other uh, classes as well. So as we can clearly see that uh, the data set is not balanced, right? So uh, and uh, we plotted it as well. So there is a huge imbalance in the data set. So uh, we tried to resample it, and after resampling, we can see that all our data set. Uh, is some uh, is balanced completely we even plotted it in the, in the diagram and <coughs> I'm sorry no, uh, and we uh, can see that all our data set n s f v and q every uh, data set is sampled perfectly so classes in this part we want to study the different classes so just uh, we'll take one sample per class and we store it in a data frame in order to have an example and then we uh, we plot it. So we plot it. So uh, this is a normal heartbeat, uh, which uh, which this is a normal uh, plot uh, of a heartbeat. Uh, similarly, we plotted a histogram of that heartbeat, so which is uh, the representation of all the classes. Uh, we take all the signal and map them. Like that, we have an estimation what the signal can look like. Similarly, we plotted that for other uh, other classes as well. Now uh, here I, I have like uh, uh, the displayed a few example of uh, the two classes like sinus, pause, SVVC, VPC. So uh, this like uh, uh, some medical expert can explain it better. Uh, the second and the third line. Okay. So again we try to uh, plot that, and uh, we can see uh, this is how it will look like. So, uh, according to us, we wouldn't be able to uh, make any difference where, unless we are a professional, uh, like we can professionally read the ECG. Uh, now, uh, we, uh, now comes the pre-treating. In this part, I will speak on how, uh, what did I do to transform the data. So, here we use the function uh, will, uh, where I added a noise to the data to generalize my train and uh, then I plotted it. Similarly, I train my data and finally I will send my data set uh, in the pre-treated data in my uh, neural network. So here is our basic neural network. Uh, the convolution, uh, the various convolution, you can see various convolution neural uh, network, neural layer, convolution layer being trained right now. So, uh, yeah, it is being trained, everything. And after that, we normalized, uh, we max pool, like we discussed in our, uh, uh, in our prototype, drop, we added the dropout layer, everything. Uh, we could see that our epoch ran for 13 uh, epochs, but the, like, as I have added a callback, so it won't go beyond the 13 because then uh, the model will uh, basically uh, add more noise to our data set to our uh, what is called uh, our neural network. So uh, I have added callback for that. Uh, now uh, we now the again the model accuracy has been plotted. Uh, I have already shown earlier in uh, my pre in the, the presentation. Now comes the iter tools here we normalized and uh, made the confusion matrix. So uh, here we can see we computed the confusion matrix and non, uh, and we uh, plotted the confusion matrix which uh, is uh, pretty good in my opinion. Uh, like uh, here we can see the true label and the predicted label. Here we can see different classes N, S, V, P, Q, N, S, V, P. Uh, VFQ and uh, we like I have already shown in the uh, my presentation that uh, uh, as we can see uh, in the intersection of Q uh, where the QQ are intersecting where the FF uh, are intersecting uh, the squares the tiles are actually darker than the rest of the tiles which means that our model is going uh, in the right direction which means that the uh, our model is predicting uh, whatever it is predicting is accurate that's what uh, the motive behind uh, confusion matrix is 
uh, and already I have discussed that uh, the S and the V uh, classes are relatively lighter than the others because we don't we didn't have much examples for these uh, two classes in our data set but if we uh, if we have a data set which will have like uh, classes uh, which will will feed in a neural network which will have uh, uh, s and b classes of rhythm so then definitely it will also uh, turn out to be uh, darker than that so yeah this is uh, basically pretty much uh, of our project uh, so here how we came to an end uh, thank you everyone yeah uh, some of the typical questions can you uh, uh, nisha can you make you the model uh, that particular model scheme you that uh, 899 dots uh, the PPT prototype you, prototype you have the model yeah yeah that's yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yeah 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 make it a presentation now yeah yeah that is the thing the, uh, the some of the questions will uh, come up uh, this one of the question is why you have not used leaky ReLU? That is leaky ReLU, and where they use the ReLU, uh, you know the leaky ReLU, uh, they generally give better performance. Yeah, they give, yeah, yeah. So that they is give, it's it's basically uh, okay. What what is the design? I just everybody. I what are the typical questions come to me, and I hope the typical question come to others also. Uh, let put the question and you answer it at your time, at your level base. So one thing is, leaky ReLU is not uh, costly, why you have not this leaky ReLU. Another thing is, what is the further development, because we have intentionally take a project, uh, you have intentionally take a project so that you can work on after you uh, examination also, because it is all on there in the Kaggle or OLAP. So, so you can continue because you are taking the resources and global and you are working for a kind of a software copyright and also that you can claim and you know this Google is particularly but we are using Google resources mainly and you know the Google is particularly very active in uh, health front. So if we uh, come up uh, with a good work, so our name should be. So, what are the suggesting things? A typical question is any other better model like uh, VGG, Google based 22 layers model, uh, will you try or some other group can try? So, that is one question can come up. Uh, then, the thing the question that uh, how you deliver uh, this your program with a front end to a uh, doctor at village level? Because at village level, you cannot get a cardiologist, but village level, you can get a health worker professional, maybe a doctor or maybe a nurse. How here can she? I am not telling that every user can with an app can do it, but we can make a web app or Android and uh, iOS and Android app so that any doctor who is not expert in uh, this thing. Uh, this, uh, in training or just yeah, yeah, yeah. she can predict and you know right now the watches is available uh, probably very few days with ECG and right now single ECG node machine is available uh, around 7000, 8000 uh, whether uh, we can get it from this uh, so uh, that is one question that is will come up and what is the extra thing you have done in the last two three months but that is not very vital what is your uh, lookup so that uh, you can use other models and and have you get a different set of data maybe how this kind of uh, can you can you find it out different sets of data and why not use it yeah now you please answer one at a time questions anyone yeah, yeah. so for the leaky relu like basically uh leaky relu and uh, uh, the normal ReLU has the same advantage. The only difference is that the slope of the output for the negative inputs is a learnable parameter, uh, while in leaky ReLU it's a hyperparameter. So that's one of the uh, advantages uh, in leaky ReLU. But here yeah. uh, we see 
yards but here we saw that like uh, uh, we didn't really uh, needed uh, we didn't really need it uh, uh, okay. what it's called uh, okay. leaky, uh, leaky value we could uh, it could be done with uh, uh, the basic normal value uh, that we learned from the slash leaky and on top of that leaky value is uh, uh, quite uh, uh, new uh, like uh, ReLU has been uh, is being studied for like a longer period of time, so I guess uh, uh, leaky ReLU studies are still going on. So yeah, it's still uh, comparatively new. So we decided to go with uh, ReLU itself. And uh, uh, sorry, and the other question was that the, uh, what was the future scope? Yes, yes. How to deliver the your scope of the Huh? Yes, by yes, your by question is leaky value by uh, is uh, uh, because you are a part of a researcher. You should try to so get the thing things. is the problem. Is like yeah, yeah. In, yeah uh, lose the uh, losing non-linearity with uh, in cost of having a better gradient uh, back okay. propagation. Okay. So, okay. I, what what is the uh, so like if we can get a good result with value to switching yeah. to uh, what, is what is your accuracy right now what is your accuracy uh, right now is 82.45 which is uh, quite good for our like average uh, yeah for our scale it is quite good yeah yes 82% is okay but there is always yes. yeah obviously if if i'll work with like yes. more expert and if i'll yes. have better resources better yes. uh, technical uh, staff, then uh, like uh, yes, I could thank definitely you. That's one, and uh, uh, you have used Kaggle Lake. Uh, are you yeah. getting really advantage from Kaggle Lake or compared to uh, Kaggle? Net actually, no, no, Kaggle Net is actually like uh, uh, it is not, it is like uh, considered the notebook for the data scientist. You can literally find everything over Kaggle, the new data set, even you can take inspirations from uh, other people's uh, uh, you know uh, the models yeah. you can even learn simultaneously and you can even interact with uh, uh, different people uh, with, uh, different active users from all around the world so Kaggle is like really uh, and plus we don't uh, really need any particular specifications in order to use Kaggle so Kaggle is what I prefer the most and Kaggle like Google Colab is obviously it is also used but like Kaggle, uh, as far as I know, as far as I talk to other data scientists, uh, they all of them suggest Kaggle because as a fresher, as beginning, uh, as a beginner, uh, as someone who is ready to get into this uh, data science field or who is uh, beginning to work on uh, the beginner projects in data science, uh, Kaggle is the best place to begin with. That's what I heard from. Uh, Yes, uh, yes. Drama, yes, yes. Kaggle, you are correct. Uh, Kaggle is more specialized platform for deep learning. All yeah. uh, generally, uh, all over the world, there are special hackathons and all this. Now, yeah. uh, my query is uh, uh, so that is it. So, you should be able and uh, have you attained any, uh, have you attained some Kaggle championship that you should try because if you have time right now, uh, there's a because you are already. A long way, you've already got a middle way in the data scientist room because you have all covered this thing. So, go for Kaggle. Kaggle, if you uh, solve the Kaggle challenges, there are every week or once in a month. Please attend those and attend some yes. Kaggle points, the Kaggle ranking. Uh, yes, everyone, uh, those who have done, uh, should go for Kaggle ranking and all this. And uh, then the uh, uh, any other uh, thing that is uh, uh, one thing uh, I must tell you that there must be some front end so that you can deliver the knowledge to the common people without sharing the code. So there yeah. is some front end application. Yeah, front end yeah. we need. Uh, that's one of yeah. the thing that. Yeah. Will be the, now what I suggest, uh, uh, people. I have my students in the next year, second year who are expert in front end. Actually, mm -hmm. we working on Flutter. Uh, Flutter is like the, the best suited because you have to develop only one application. Uh, the same application can be deployed for Android and iOS and web app. So that is a single code base. Uh, and this is whole technology from Google. Uh, so everything 
from Google. So I, uh, it is already working for one or two projects. We have some uh, Kaggle expert. So uh, I will try to put some Kaggle expert. You also, one of you or two of you, if you can find time, uh, you have to learn a little bit of JavaScript, HTML, and certain amount of front end, and, and then use Kaggle with uh, this thing you can use. That is a good thing. So, Kaggle you can use. Uh, another thing is, I will request everyone to wait for 5 or 6 weeks because um, our uh, audience said that she would join at 10 30. We are nearing about it. I am not elongating time. Please wait for her. So, let her complete that hard deliberations. That is one because it is one for the reference. That is one thing. And uh, um, I want to hear something from Deepika Shohel. What is your uh, plan? With the remaining work, who want to contribute really, and also 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 Nisha, uh, so that uh, uh, I think hope Nisha, all you all should be involved in the coding. We are nearly not bothering of tomorrow. Tomorrow definitely will will shine. So feedback from Nisha. Well, I hope that you will work, and uh, we should make it a. I have already available at Kaggle. That is a good thing. Code availability. Now I wish that one front end should be available with uh, Flutter technology. So like so, tomorrow? No, no, not tomorrow. After this, you just say tomorrow that we are we are working on it and uh, we develop because always the examiner would ask question: What will you do with the project? You are ending it. Is your whether you doing it or not? You should say now we are doing it. We want to make. A yeah. front end application for uh, ordinary doctors at remote places, and uh, that is called uh, you know, um, uh, that is called the people cannot go right now. See, uh, travel restriction, maybe COVID, and all these things. It is not that easy. So, but you know, the internet will be 5G and all these things. Uh, right now, the speed is okay. So, we, we, we for the uh, this project one uh, lead should be a uh, front end. Uh, this can be through Android app or iOS app. We can do it through Flutter. Flutter we can do it. Not tomorrow. It is. It is say next two three months. So you have time. Yeah. So any feedback from you, yes. sir? Yeah. Tell sir, me. I want to ask one question. Yeah. So who all teachers will be there in no, final no, presentation? This is, this is this is the recording version. Who will tell you? This is the recorded, so we should just okay, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. okay. Uh, anything else? Nisha, can anybody, Deepika, can you call Oriyati, please, that she can join now? Just call her that we are waiting. Yeah, very good presentation, we all, everyone. Sir, what are you doing? contesting but I, I am crossing Shohel that No, I he, he said review, not review. He said that he said. Okay. Anyway, uh, Shohel, there is a, your presentation is smart, but, but they, you, what the thing is that I want really some front end development from you and Deepika. Uh, the front end portion, uh, the, uh, my other group, uh, they have developed Gucci front ends. Okay. Because it should be practice. We are not. Uh, maybe as a data scientist, maybe you will be employed. So this project will be, I think, we, uh, whatever you have worked, you can proud of, you can tell your work that you have done this work at graduate level and this and I think you should be proud of. Actually, I am proud of that you have done this work. Okay, this is a world standard project, not that we are all making, uh, working on a data set that is recognized. And good number of data set. Now, what I think, what I think is the remaining main points of your project is probably that could have been done if there is no confusion about this 
Like online, offline, all these things, you have to you have to be physically at your place. You can much better develop more development in the front end. That is, uh, I want that situation. Yes, so sir. we are all proud of you. Then. Uh,